I want to talk Grizzlies a little bit just because this is the rare case where there's a before and after for this team. And the before, you know, obviously the before is when John Morant was suspended and the Grizzlies were you know, snake bit by injuries and just like full stop, one of the most disappointing teams in the league. Uh, and so I wanted to look at just mostly out of curiosity, like, because basically if you did the numbers, they got to win at close to a 50 win pace. I know that they they just lost as we're recording this. Um, so this will change slightly, but they needed a 50 win pace to get to 500, which, you know, is to go 41 and 41, which is, as you look at it right now, like that might do it for like a ninth or 10th spot in the West and get into the play in, um, which would be a pretty like significant accomplishment given how bleak yeah. things have been so far. Um, and modest as it is to say a team that's won 50 plus two years in a row could really scramble and make the last two playing spots. Maybe it's like the type of thing where if they lose four or five or even like three or four, like at any point, <laughs> that just like, over. I, I'm no longer paying attention to them for the, probably. But so with uh jaw's first game was 12 it was a uh, december 19th since then memphis i had him at five and three they're five and four now five and three when he in the games he's played uh their best win was probably that one over new orleans uh, the day after christmas they've had some pushovers so like even the solid record since jaw's return is a little iffy um the 28th in offense ninth in defense since morant came back which is a little like i don't know i buy the defense being ninth or better with their personnel 28th on offense is just like shooting variants and small samples so like yeah like morant's not hitting his threes uh marcus smart still isn't hitting his threes luke Kennard came back and was hitting his threes there well you go. if he plays he does but so to that point lineups coming into uh this this recently lost game i believe to toronto uh lineups with jaw bain smart and Jaron Jackson Jr. were minus 8.1 net rating. Small samples, obviously. But the only reason for that is the offense has been horrible. It's like 94 points per 100, which is, you know, in the modern era is like unfathomably, like you just can't, you almost can't play that poorly on offense with, yeah. with five NBA players on the floor. So <laughs> like, and the defense is 102.5, which again, the salt, the small sample caveats should apply to both ends, but it's just like, I think that might be about right. Like that group could defend that way. That's, or at least that's closer to real. So like, I'm kind of, I'm still sort of optimistic. And again, optimistic being you can play at a 50 win pace for the next three months or whatever. And you know, like, because you've done that with roughly this team. And if Marcus smart is anything other than terrible and can be healthy, then I don't know. Like, I just think the offense needs to be, a priority in any move they make. And I wonder trying to like sort of wave to this, like what, okay, so what, like they're better with jaw. They need to be really good to have a postseason of any kind. Like, what do you do? Can you flip smart and can you package him with like Aldama or Zaire Williams? Is anybody interested in that? And you can get like a two way wing or like a big that would make more sense next to Jaron Jackson jr. Like, it's like Wendell Carter is that, that guy, like, do you go stop gap with like Nick Vucevic? Do you go stop gap with Valanciunas? Like Siakam? You, Siakam? Do you how are you getting Siakam if you're if you're the Grizzlies? I think you I think you outlined it is that I do believe he doesn't fit the archetype of the bigger forward, but because of what Toronto will have been sending out, it's can you get one of sort of those forwards, those younger forwards, not Zaire Williams, mm -hmm. but let's say Santi Aldama, smart, and then the rest of the salary will make it work. I'm sure Toronto would insist on Luke Kennard, but they're probably going to be more apt to be. You no, know, like we'll give you Brandon Clark and Marcus Smart and Sandy Aldama, and I think that number gets you to that. I, I don't think that's enough. You got to have. I probably need picks, but I don't hate Siakam there because if you have Jackson space in the floor that you can you can get that, away. With I, you that. are. I do wonder if he would become disgruntled. With like, all right, well, my offensive role is just buried. We got Bain, Siakam, and John Morant. Where's that headed? Yeah, for you. I I like. I don't know if I like the end result, but I like it enough to where I would really want to see it. Right. And I think, I think you do have to just skew offense if you're going to improve this roster, which is like weird because the big offseason move was getting Marcus smart in there to replace Dylan Brooks because you're trying to preserve the defense. Um, I, I just, I think if you have Jaron Jackson and you know, jaw's not great, but you have enough around him, your defense is going to be fine. So it's just like, how can you, because I guess if you got to play at a 50 win pace, you need to have a net rating that's, you know, plus three, plus four, probably. So it's like, it's all got to come on offense. The defense will be there. You just have to be above water offensively, and they just haven't been yet. Um, 
So yeah, they're they're an interesting team to think of as like a trade candidate because you might. Would you, if you're them? I understand that Jaw's good. You've paid. I mean, Bain the extension hasn't kicked in, but like you've paid him. You paid Jaron Jackson Jr. Is this the season to? We've talked about how they waited too long to make the consolidation trade or trades, and then when they finally did, they were the wrong ones. Basically, mm -hmm. do you make a move like that this season when it when it feels so like just the path you're gonna have to travel to get even just into the playoffs, right? It, it, there's the argument of, well, yeah, then go and get guy X so that you can actually get into the plane and into the playoffs. But then it's, well, you give up this many assets for a season. That's just going to end in, you know, losing in the first round or something. Like, and then yeah. you could argue, well, if that player's under contract, you're going to keep them. There's, you should always just go get them because you're not just going to tank this right. season anyway. And so I probably land on if it's out there, if you can try Siakam or, I even thought about Larry marketing for this team. I don't know if you like the triple J marketing pairing. That would be something to think I about. Do, I very much do. I think, I think marketing, <laughs> like you, you, I, I just don't, I don't know. Did the Grizzlies have five first round picks to appease Danny Ainge for, for marketing? They have all their own. So <laughs> they can get, they get, I think they could trade four. I mean, walk. that's, that's a, like a way better fit than Siakam, right? Just because marketing has so much value as just a shooter that, that he could, you know, I'm not worried about him monopolizing touches or being upset, right. that he's not getting enough on ball stuff. Um, this maybe it's a bigger question. Like, do you, so let's say the Grizzlies lose six in a row. Right. And so now it's just like, we're not making, we cannot make the play and we just don't have it. Should that change like their approach to going and getting the type of player we're talking about? Like just in like a, in like a theoretical sense, like, or should you just go get that guy and be like, well, okay, now we're going to see what we got this year. We'll probably rest a bunch of guys. And then we come back next year with the team we want. Like, I, I think maybe they should operate almost the same way, whether they're sort yeah. of unofficially eliminated or not from the playoffs. Cause just because, you know, most of this roster, the guys that really matter are young. So you can still think like, well, we're just trying to be good in 24, 25 and beyond. So we'll go get marketing in or we'll go get see or, you know, whatever. I think, I don't think it should. Change. Yeah. That's a, that's a good call. Could they be? Yeah, I just I'm curious as to. I think they have the assets to get Siakam if it comes down to it. That's a, well, one. That's assuming if the Raptors actually want picks. But do they even have the assets to these other guys that we're going to talk about, or not, or that we could talk about marketing? I mm -hmm. don't know that they would have the best offer. Like if they, if we're talking, they go all out for marketing. Do they have the maybe? Um, do they have the, and like, that's a weird thing to say about someone who's maybe a top 35 player in the league. Like, do we have enough to get him? They probably, I, my guess would be, they wouldn't have the best offer for Mikhail Bridges. No, I just, cause you go down the list and you think like, because it has to be pretty pick heavy. Cause, cause who's the young guy on Memphis that a team is thinking like, who, there's not like a quickly probably Vince example. Williams who's on a two way. And it's just, yeah, but like, there's not, a, there's not quickly is like, we'll just use him. Cause he's a good example of like, this guy hasn't, you know, performed like a star yet, but we sort of like, there's a lot of reason to believe he can come pretty close to that. And he's young enough and he'll be like, they don't have that guy, which I think is, needs to be a headliner. Even if you're talking about a bunch of picks, like you're, you're going to, you need, if you're going for someone like Mark and, you know, Ananobi's different because of the expiring stuff, but like, or the, the player option, I guess, if you want to be specific about it, but uh, it's just, you need, yeah. Memphis is going to have a hard time having the best offer for like anyone of like real consequence, I think. <laughs>